Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, Lesson 28, we'll take a look at various service design patterns for both microservices as well as macro services. There's two basic kinds of design patterns for services. The first is something called a direct access design, and the second is something called an API access design. Now, what I want to do is show you each of, design, each of these designs and then um, also let you know which one is my favorite and why. So let's take a look first at the direct access design, a very common way of basically designing services. In the direct access design, first of all, we have our classes that perform most of that business functionality. And I have the word module here, but these are classes. This is totally technology agnostic. But the point is that each of these classes it themselves expose all of the RESTful endpoints. Now, we might also have other classes that are shared classes. In other words, calculators, formatters, interceptors, uh, abstract classes, and stuff like that. And then the API layer uh, directly invokes each of these classes um, based on those RESTful endpoints. And so for example, here's what each of those modules might look like. So each particular class right here, for example, here's our customer name resource with its get annotation or its put, post, patch, or delete. Um, along with our path statement. And as a matter of fact, here's getting the contact information and such. But the key point is that whether we have a get name, put name, post name, whichever, the actual logic to persist that name, uh, to do some aggregations on that name, or to even retrieve that name is within this method right here. And so this is called a direct access design. Let me show you another alternative that I actually like better, and it's called the API access design. Now in the API access design, we have those same classes, all the, the ones kind of in the bluish there are the business logic, and the ones in the gray may be some shared code. Now, what we have is another class in here called an API access facade. This class within that microservice is responsible for exposing all of the RESTful endpoints. So none of the classes know whether the request is coming from REST or maybe SOAP or maybe messaging or even gRPC. And then the API access facade, what it does is it directly instantiates or injects each of these classes to be able to perform the work. So the facade really essentially has one line of code, which is to redirect the processing over to these process agnostic modules. Even the orchestration of those is handled inside each module. And then the API layer then talks directly to one class, which is this API access facade. And here's an example. For example, this is the customer service API. So this is the class, for example, in Java, that would handle the API access. Notice it has a path. Um, this is the customer demographic service API. Um, notice that now I'm starting to append the path name for that call along with the get put post patch or delete annotations. Now here though, the get name request is the method that is exposed as the RESTful endpoint. However, all this does is simply instantiate or inject another class and delegate the work to those classes. And each method would continue on. Now, in a lot of cases where you have a macro service, I might have several kinds or, or several classes representing that API. In other words, I might domain it, domain scope it by uh, subdomain, in other words, customer uh, demographics versus payment information versus preferences. Um, but I also might do it by use case, retrieve versus um, uh, uh, update. Now, the reason I really like the API access design, and this is one that I usually follow in, in pretty much all of my projects, is the fact that what we have is really a separation of concerns here. In other words, the classes, those modules that you see there in the kind of the bluish color, um, are now responsible for the business processing, but rather that API access facade is responsible for exposing the endpoints for that particular microservice or for that particular service. And so we have this separation of concerns. As a matter of fact, that API access facade can handle validations. It can handle transformations, let's say from JSON to or XML into a Java object or C-sharp object or even uh, a parameter list that are used by those modules. And what we get from that is something called protocol agnostic processing. This is probably the most powerful feature because all of those classes that you see there have no idea whether the request came in from REST, whether it was XML, whether it was JSON, whether it was 
again, a, a, a messaging or gRPC. It's simply protocol agnostic, which allows me to have other kinds of facades for different endpoints without having to replicate my code. And then secondary, it really gives us this service context and binding in the sense that all those modules are truly compile time bound to that service context. And I also get a service catalog capability here where I only have to look at one class, that API access facade, to actually find out what endpoints this service is actually exposing, whether those be internal and or external. All right, so this has been Software Architecture Monday with Mark Richards. Again, this is Lesson 28, Service Design Patterns. Uh, stay tuned for next week for another lesson in architecture. Thank you very much.